Hey everyone, this is your friendly neighborhood accountant Eric Stockhausen and today we're going to be looking at the midwinter update revealed today on the Gwent live stream where more than a hundred new cards are planned to be released mid-December including two new leaders for every faction. This is just a first impressions video where I will be looking at possible synergy, strengths and weaknesses of the cards, but I won't be giving them any ratings or telling you that they're going to be overpowered um, because we don't actually know what their final versions will be. All the cards are going to be on the Gwent uh, website and I'll have a link in the description where you can see all the cards as they're revealed. This page will update when they are revealed as well. Without further ado, we're going to go into the neutrals. The first neutral card we're going to talk about is the Wyvern Scale Shield, which is a special item that boosts a unit by the initial power of a unit in your hand. S items are a new type of special card that are being introduced to the game. I assume that they're going to have tutors, cards that fetch cards from your deck, and cards allow you to replay cards from your discard added to the game to synergize with items. I can imagine a tutor with three base strength uh, allowing you to fetch the Wyvern Scale Shield from your deck, and then you would probably select the 11 base strength card in your hand. There are plenty of those to boost it. So it would become a 14 strength card, and it would be a thinning effect, which would make the tutor really strong. Now, uh, you would probably also see a gold card that allows you to replay uh, two or three items from your discard pile. Again, so imagine you have two Wyvern Scale Shields in your discard pile. You play the gold card. Let's say it has five base strength. Well, then you could possibly get 27 points off that play if you had an 11 strength card in your hand. It's pretty strong. I am excited to see uh, what kind of decks synergize with items in the future. There will definitely need to be some balancing because I can see a lot of exploits with the Wyvern Scale Shield moving forward. The next card is the Peasant Militia. It is a special tactic that fills a row with peasants. Um, the fill a row uh, means that there's going to be a rule change. Right now there are infinite number of cards that you can put on any row. Filling the row implies that there will be a limit to how many cards you can put on the row, which is great going for mobile since mobile couldn't handle infinite cards on every row. You gotta put a kind of a limit somewhere especially if you want to be able to target all those cards because you eventually they just kind of fold on top of each other and that doesn't look good on a mobile device where you kind of have to touch it with your finger this card is great in decks that synergize with swarming effects um, you would play yennefer with this and you would play siege supports against it you would play yennefer uh, lacerates and ballistas all of which could target all the militia. Now, port, note that the peasants all have one base strength. So let's imagine that there's only 10 cards you can put on every row. That would mean the maximum amount of points you could get from this card is 10 points um, with all things equal. Now, if you have some cards on the row that you play it on, it will be weaker because let's say the limit is 10, you already have one card on that row, then there's only gonna spawn nine peasants. It also comes with the drawback that once you put all those peasants on that row, you can't put any more units on the row unless they get removed somehow. These are all things to consider. You wouldn't want to play three uh, peasant militias unless you have like three siege supports on the board, and then in which case they would be peasant militias would be absurdly strong. Um, they would be very hard to remove off the board um, with scorch effects though they could be removed with things like epidemic effects like the old school epidemic the next card is kind of meme card it's the lesser demons uh yes iris would like these cards units relic that moves a unit from your deck to your hand and then discards a random card now there are there is a reading of this card in which case you move the card from your deck to your hand and then you have a chance of discarding it because you then discard a random card. The more favorable reading is you move a card, you pick a card to add to your hand, 
and then it picks one of the cards that are already in your hand previously, not the one that you picked, to discard. Now you can, on that later reading, manipulate that random chance the same way you would manipulate a random chance with a Nilf Guardian Knight by waiting until Lesser Demons is the second to last card in your hand. You leave, you keep a card you don't want in your hand, you play Lesser Demons, you get that last remaining card that you don't want discarded, and then you pick a card that you would prefer to have in your hand as the last card to be played. So there are ways to manipulate the random chances if, and that, I, this is a big if, it doesn't have a chance of discarding the card that you're picked that you picked from your deck. As it reads now, it sounds like you could <laughs> accidentally do that, which would be really sad. <laughs> so the next meme card is Saskia Dragonfire. It's a unit Draconid Eidrin, Eidrin maybe, that banishes your hand. That means you cannot revive them. I'm not sure if it adds to um, the uh, captains, the pirate captains, because is ba does banishing cards in your hand add to your discard count? Don't know. Uh, probably not, since discard specifically means that it goes to your graveyard. And you draw that many cards. Now, there's ways of playing Saskia Dragonfire that are that is beneficial. Let's say you purposely mulligan all your silvers and golds from your hand, leaving yourself with just bronze cards. And then, let's say you have Francisca or a mulligan style deck, you play Saskia Dragonfire, you get rid of all those bronze cards, and then suddenly all you have left is silvers and golds and five other bronze cards. Or five to six more bronze cards. It's pretty powerful fact of thinning your deck really fast. You wouldn't have to play any other deck thinners if you were to do that. All in all, I think Saskia Dragonfire will actually find a place in the meta for decks that uh, want to have extremely consistent experience, and I would probably think Francisca would probably be the best place for Saskia. Which fits, since um, Saskia is more of a Skellige unit than a neutral unit, in my opinion. The next card, this is the card everybody's worried about, is Geralt Yerden. Um It's a unit Witcher. I love Witcher cards, um, that reset all units and remove their tokens. Now, ignore the base strength because that's in flux right now. The stream showed a five base strength version of this. Right now, this card will um, has a strong effect against Spellatel with their Dothlana Protectors and Swordmasters. Mostly, Scoyatel is being affected, followed up by Northern Realms, Monsters, and Nilfgaard, Nilfgaard with their spies, of course, and their uh, Emperor Enforcers would be affected um, since spies have, uh, there are token versions of spies that would be removed from this. The peasant card up here, all those peasants would be removed uh, because they're tokens. There's also the harpy eggs. So all things considered, Geralt Yerden um, has a dramatic effect on the board. Even at five base strength, it's pretty much a better um, Coral. Since Coral basically, let's say it turns one Dothbonner Detector into a two strength, this would turn all of them back to two strength. You just play it last. Yes, they could still buff themselves up afterwards, but you're not gonna worry about that. I would assume this card would be played in Skellige, much like Coral has to be, but um, since Skellige isn't worried about removing the boost on their cards and they don't play as many tokens. The reset effect would um, actually benefit them because it would re any units that had gotten, gotten damaged, like the skirmishers, which often get damaged, would be healed up back to full health, which would be great. You would like that. All in all, I think that um, Geralt Yerden will be turned into um, only one row at a time because all units on the board is pretty OP. So that's it for um, neutrals. Now we're gonna move on to monsters. The first monster we're gonna talk about is Werewolf. It is a unit cursed beast, immune, strengthened by seven on contact with moonlight. 
This card is cool. It introduces two new things to the game, immunity and moonlight. Immunity means the card cannot be targeted specifically by another card. So you can't consume it with Eki, uh, Ekimara, you can't hit it with Geralt Ard or uh, Swallow Potion or Azure Thunder. So it's kind of a double-edged sword there. Uh, it can be affected by cards that do not specifically target things like AoE effects and um, cards like Vran Warrior, since Vran Warrior doesn't actually target things. Uh, speaking of AoE effects, that would mean like Commander's Horn and Weather. Weather like Moonlight, which is the other thing going to be added to the game. It will be cool to see how Moonlight works when, we, when it finally gets revealed. The next card is Striga. Striga is a unit relic cursed. Deal 8 damage to a non-monster unit. The relic tag is important because there are going to be relic syn synergies in the game. The 8 strength is important, especially against Northern Realms, which has lots of cards that you want to target and remove from the board before things like Henselt tutors three more machines onto the board or more siege supports. Our first relic, syn relic synergy being added to the game is Weavis Incantation, Unit Relic Mage. Choose one, strengthen all allied relics by two, or play a bronze or silver relic from your deck and strengthen it by two. This card's a lot like Vesemir, the gold Vesemir card, which allows you to pull a uh, bronze or silver alchemy card from your deck. This card's stronger than Vesemir, much like the silver uh, Weavises are stronger than the silver Witcher three trio. Um, <laughs> This card, I would imagine, you would either pull like Striga with it, or perhaps all three of the um, other Weavises, because technically they are also relics. Um, you probably wouldn't be using it, the strengthening all allied relics by two, unless you found a way to get a large body on a large amount of them on the board, and it's really hard to get to that point. I would imagine playing Weavis early rather than late in the turn. Tutor effects you kind of want to play early. The mage tag is important for the um, witch hunters. And the other thing to note is that since one of the weavises is getting a gold version, the other two are going to get gold versions. So we can already eliminate two of these gold cards down here and say that they're probably going to be weavises. Moving on to Nilfgaard. The first card we're going to talk about in Nilfgaard is the Viper School Witcher unit. Witcher deal three damage, increase damage dealt by one for each alchemy card in your initial deck. Initial deck means the deck that you came in before you started, before you drew anything. That's pretty big. It's not how much are left in your deck at that given point. Uh, all things considered, that means this card is really, really strong. Now, the alchemy cards are typically not that strong um, <laughs> on their own. You don't want to be playing them from your hand, generally speaking. But outside of that, uh, when you combine it with this card, that makes for a pretty strong alchemy deck. There's already a few alchemy synergies in Nilfgaard. Now, initial has made me think a little bit, and if we go back to the uh, Wyvern Scale Shield, if initial doesn't mean base strength, it might mean uh, what the card's original strength was before you started the game. I don't think that would ever really matter. Now, the only time you would ever have a card in your hand that had higher base strength than it originally had would mean that you kind of like put it back into your hand with like uh, a mirror and you had buffed it up with um, like the like a shrooms or something like that that is possible and that might be the reason why it says initial it's trying to avoid any exploits where you do some strengthening effects there's also veteran decks that could um, get kind of out of hand and so using the initial tag you can avoid veteran decks from exploiting wyvern scale shield too okay continuing uh the Cadaver, the Cadaver, uh, Cadaverine Venom is a special item. Choose one, deal two damage to 
add enemy and all units of the share its same categories or destroy a bronze or silver neutral unit. Uh, the destroy effect is probably what we're going to use it on most of the time. It's they're like the Dothmana protectors and stuff like that you would want to destroy with this. This is a really good card. Uh, you're almost always going to get good value out of it. Now sometimes it's just going to end up being an Azure's Thunder if you use the destroy effect. But in most days it's, it's going to be pretty good. Now the deal da two damage to all enemy an enemy and all units of the share the same categories. It's not looking at the name. It's looking at things like this card's a Witcher. It will hit all the Witchers or it'll hit all the beast or relics and stuff like that. It counters decks that are pushing a synergy with the first choice. I think this is a really good alchemy card to be added to the game. Oh, it's an item card. I would have said it was an alchemy card. Um, it might have an alchemy tag added to it later. Right now it doesn't say that, but it reads like an um, alchemy card. The next card is Letho Kingslayer. A unit Witcher, choose one, destroy an enemy leader on the board, and set self to 11 strength. Or play a bronze or silver tactic from your deck. Now, you're probably never going to use it to destroy an enemy leader with this base strength. Because, if it, well, actually you might. Um, it would be 11 plus whatever the base strength is of the leader. So Francisca has six strengths. So if you do that, it would be a 17 point gold, which is pretty good. Um, the other option is to play a bronze or silver tactic from your deck. There are gonna be added tactics to the game. An example would be um, peasants, peasant militia. That would be a tactic. Uh, Commander's horn is a silver tactic. So if you play this in a reveal deck, which easily gets five units on the melee row, you can then play Letho Kingslayer to play your Commander's Horn on that melee row and get a lot of points really fast. You can also make a Nilfgaard deck around tactics, possibly. That'll be cool. Moving on to Northern Realms, our first Northern Realms card is Winch, Special Tactic. Spawn a bronze Northern Realms machine and boost it by two. Um, spawning doesn't necessarily, it doesn't mean it pulls it from your deck. It just means you make a copy of it. Uh, this card will always be slightly stronger than the um, a normal machine, but the cool thing about it is that let's say you have three um, of that type of Northern Realms machine in your deck, well then you can pull the rest, all three of them from your deck with Hensel. So this card's really great with Hensel because you don't have to have the card in your hand. You don't have to pull anything from the board. You're automatically getting three from your deck, which is great. It makes Hensel so much stronger. Uh, this card is going to be in. Uh, I think this card's going to be insane. <laughs> don't know yet, but it looks pretty OP with Hensel. Uh, Vincent, unit cursed beast, destroy the armor of all units and then boost self by half the value destroyed. Uh, this is a finisher card, but it's extremely vulnerable to Scorch. Um, I don't like it so much. There's already uh, bet the bronze card is sufficient that removes armor and gets you a one for one value. That card's sufficient for what it is. You don't need a giant Vincent onto the board. It's just too vulnerable, in my opinion. Until all the cards are revealed, though, I will not have a final conclusion on Vincent, though. Next one is Seltkirk, uh, unit officer cursed uh, Adrian, dual an enemy, three armor. So this card, uh, dual is a new mechanic being added to the game. This means this card deals its base strength or its strength to um, an enemy card. And then the enemy card's remaining strength is then hit against this. Ideally, you wanna use this card for removal against things like Dragoon and um, any other Northern Realms machine that you want to get off the board. The three armor allows, means that if you hit like a 10 strength card, all the 10 strength card will do, will have 10 strength, uh, three strength left over. And then all those three strength will just hit the armor. You have an interesting interaction with Quensine. So if let's say Selkirk has, um, Quensine on him, then he will, uh, be protected from the retaliation of the card he hits, but he will also have nine strength instead of seven. 
if the card that he attacks has Quensign on it, and there are times where all your opponent's units will only have Quensign on it against things like certain types of Skeleta, I mean not Skeleta, Skoyatel, kind of like the hand buff Skoyatel loves having uh, Quensigns, then uh, so Kirk is going to be a liability. You could just play him against a unit that has like 20 strength on it, but Quensign on it, and he'll just kill himself without doing any damage. It's just play a card, remove Quensign from one card, be bad, <laughs> be really bad. Moving on to Skoyatel, we have Half Elf Hunter, Unit Elf Soldier, spawn a copy of this unit. This card is really good for uh, Saskia's Dragon form, and it is a hand buffing card. Now, with the Sword Masters, there's a downside that you might not be able to get full value from its removal effect because there's no card that equals its strength. It's because you can easily get your uh, Sword Masters so high that they don't get, they're just too strong. With the health, Half Elf Hunter, you avoid that problem. They're also resilient to certain kinds of removal because if the Half Elf Hunter, do, um, if you use like a Shrooms on only on one of them, you still have the other one. If you put Quensine on it, this the uh, Quensine will move on to the other copy as well. There's a lot of really interesting things that Half Elf Hunter will be able to do. At right now, I'm really interested in how Saskia's Dragon Form will um, interact with this card. So it's, it's an extra elf on the board. It's like two elves. <laughs> this is another uh, interesting card. Uh, uh, Milan, uh, deal four damage to the units at the end of the row. Now, we don't know exactly what end of the row means, but let's just assume it does. If the opponent has a unit on all three rows, it'll do an extra 12 damage, meaning it's a, 17, a maximum of 17 points silver. It's also an elf, which we already know that there are a lot of elf synergies in Squayatel. Um, It might... I. It, while it kind of reads like an ambush card, we I'm pretty sure it is not an ambush card. It's more like Bran. Uh, Isengrim Outlaw is a unit elf officer. Choose one, spawn a silver special card, or spawn a silver Scoyatel unit. Um, well, the spawn means it's not going to deck thin, but this is a really strong card effect. I would say it's better than Gales in many ways. <laughs> There are a lot of silver cards that you want to play multiple times. Uh, imagine if you play uh, this in a spell Scoytel deck and you do it on Nature's Gift. Now you have two Nature's Gift. You can do Nature's Gift into Nature's Gift, uh, into Aromancy, into <laughs> um, Skellige Storm. That would be a lot of spells simultaneously. And then you couldn't do um, your leader ability and use Aethne or Enya to play Nature's Gift again. That that would really be a big boost to the silver uh, to Spellatel. So that's cool. But there's a lot of things that are hurting Spellatel in this patch too. So there's that side. There's that thing side of things. Right now, I think Isagram Outlaw is just going to be a really strong card. I like any card that has these kind of effects. I just assume spawn means you pull a card from your deck uh, without actually pulling it from the deck. It's just you make a copy of it. That's what I mean. Moving on to Skellige, our first card is Bone Talisman, special item. Choose one, resurrect a bronze beast, or heal an ally and strengthen it by three. So this is our first beast synergy card. This card's actually kind of cool. Uh, it allows you to have a lot more resurrects in your deck. There are certain beasts that you might really want to resurrect, like um, the Berserker's Bear form. Uh, I believe that's a beast. <laughs> um, the heal and alley and strengthen by three is also good for Skellige because strengthening effects mean that you can revive them and get that three strength back. And since your opponent might not be able to kill, but may still damage some of your cards, the uh, healing effect can be very useful. Armor smiths are being used, and there are healing effects. You're going to get a lot of resurrects if you just if you make a beast deck around this, because Skellige already has the Priestess of Freya. 
It's weaker than Priestess of Freya if you're using it for Razorak because it doesn't give you that one strength body though. Uh, Duran, unit, diamond, cursed. Whenever um, an enemy is damaged, boost this unit by one. So it is uh, an Axeman, a Tursok clan's Axeman, but it triggers off every time an enemy is damaged as opposed to once a turn. So this card can get really big really fast if you remember the old kind of weathers. How those were like. Uh, Heim, or, or him, Heim. Uh, Brokvar, cursed. Choose one. Play a cursed unit from your deck. So this is a um, tutor. Or spawn a silver unit from your opponent's deck. Which means you don't remove it, but you get a copy of it. This is a pretty... Um, there are a lot of cursed units you might want to pull from your deck. Uh, you can pull Uldric with this. You can pull uh, Duran. Uh, there's certain other cards. <laughs> the spawn the silver unit from your deck. Uh, I'm not sure if this is random though. So that that's something to consider. If you get to choose which silver unit you pick, then this, this would be a very fun card to play. Uh, I like playing with my opponent's cards. It's cool. Okay, and that is all for today. This is all of them. I'm really excited when they release new cards. Tell me what you think. Sorry if I mispronounced some of the names. <laughs> um, yeah, I am excited.